Hello everybody and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program where we currently have one contract remaining and that is to explore EVE. Now technically this is just a flyby of EVE and we have to return to Kerbin from a flyby of EVE. Now that is something we can definitely do right now. There's no doubt about that. My question is, with the ludicrous amount of Delta V that we have right now in our lander craft, what do we suppose the odds are? on doing a ghillie mission. I feel like it's pretty good, honestly. Like, I think we've got enough here. Pretty sure, anyway. Certainly if we were to extend this tank a little bit, I mean, we know that we have a tiny amount of weight margin here. So that is a possibility. Hypothetically, if we were to take not that. <laughs> Let's reattach that. If we were to take this and duplicate the Rockamax 32 tank, this is hypothetical. What would our thrust to weight here be? 1.53. So it's a little on the low side, but I think we could maybe extend this tank a tiny amount. So we extend this instead of being a 32, maybe by a 16. 1.58. That's probably good enough. That'll add a lot of Delta V in this stage here. I don't think that that Delta V is strictly speaking necessary. But overall, I like it. So one thing that I want to do is I want to get a little bit, like I'm, I'm a little concerned about wiggling and things like that. I'd like to get a strut connected. Oh, I want this to be on all of these. Uh, Let's quad symmetry that. There we go. And I want a strut to be connected down over to here. Now, when this detaches, that strut will automatically break, but that's fine. And then I also want a strut to be connected from the very tip of this nose to here. In theory, that will make this a lot more stable. <laughs> Emphasis on the in theory. It's very duct tape and chewing gum, right? It's, it's not pretty. That's for sure. But I just want to make sure that that's in there. And this thrust to weight, we can't up the thrust limiter here at all. We could upsize the SRBs, I think. Right? There's a bigger SRB than Pollux's, I think. Do we have it? If we if we have it, I'm not sure. Uh, Pollux's thoroughbreds. No, I think we're I, I think we're fine. I mean, if we had to, we could uh, liquid fuel the side boosters and definitely get more thrust to weight that way. Honestly, I think this is okay. 1.58 should be plenty thrust to weight. And this extension of the... We can probably just, like, have that be white. This extension of this stage here is going to mean that we have a lot more Delta V. So if we look at stage 7 here, and uh, we save this for the moment, if we drop this stage, or rather this fuel tank out, like that, and we look at stage seven, once we are in space, of course, this is currently 2623 Delta V. So we put that back in and stage seven becomes 3000. So this is about 400 Delta V. I mean, honestly, I think we had enough as it was to do a ghillie mission. I'm pretty sure we did. Now, we're going to want to bring either Jeb or Valentina here. We don't need two pilots. We definitely want to bring Hadgard. There's no doubt about that. So let's save this and let's get this launched. We're going to head off to Gilly here. I'm definitely uh, dead reckoning the Delta V here. I'm not consulting a Delta V map or anything along those lines. I'm pretty sure we've got enough. As long as we're careful with it anyway. So we're going to need to get into orbit here. And that is, of course, step one. So we'll throttle up and off we go. We're going to be at full throttle basically the whole way. And we're going to get as much horizontal speed here as we possibly can. We'll just lock to prograde at this time. Cool. We could grab this atmospheric analysis, I suppose. Collect that. There we go. That'll do. We're drifting off of our heading here. Let's pull that back up. I don't want to be... I want to be fairly equatorial here. Okay. Cool. Our apoapsis height is currently about 10 kilometers. 
we're definitely going to need that to be a bit higher. And how long until our SRBs burn out? Oh, we can grab this atmospheric analysis. We'll go ahead and do so. We'll collect that. Wonderful. We've got about 15 seconds until our SRBs are gone. Which is, of course, completely fine. And I'm just checking where in the staging our nose cone jettison is. That'll also be completely fine. You can see here, atmosphere is getting a lot thinner. SRBs are gone. Cool. 60 kilometer apoapsis height. At this point, we're going to head straight on over to the horizon. So that'll be fine. Just a slight inclination change here. Okay. There we go. We are fighting some atmospheric forces at the moment. There's no doubt about that. But it all looks good. We're at 73 kilometers for our apoapsis, and we're going to keep an eye on that. So this stage isn't going to quite lift us into orbit, but that's okay. We'll just burn this out fully on horizontal speed. And then we'll use this stage to get us into proper orbit. Cool. Okay. We'll go ahead and jettison this. We're not going to burn in Atmo here. We are going to turn a wee bit here and jettison our nose cones. They are no longer necessary. So there they go. And we'll just lock to prograde for the moment. Cool. And once we get to the apoapsis here, we're going to, of course, need to circularize something along the lines of... This will do. According to this, we should have already started the burn, but you can see the moment we hit space, that updated because this is, this is a vacuum efficient engine. So we'll just position on the maneuver node here. We want to start our burn in 40 seconds, approximately. We don't want you to be heading back to prograde, Jeb. You can stay here. Cool. I just realized we have awkwardness in our cargo storage unit. That's okay. We're, we would have to take a second flight to get these guys there anyway. We're going to want to take Valentina up there. So we're going to need the XP and we're going to need to fly other other uh, parts there anyway. So that's okay. We'll land on Gilly again in a moment. Well, not in a moment, but soon. So two, one, and we begin our burn. So this is our circularization here going to be about 500 meters per second. And that's completely fine. So we will physics warp a bit here. Cool. For the time being, we'll just lock to prograde. And it's always awkward to do that with physics warping, but it's okay. Yeah, at this point, we need to be like over this way. Stop it, Jeb. There we go. So just position here for the last, like, 100 meters per second in this burn. I was hoping that the first stage would get us a little bit closer to orbit there, but here we are. I mean, it's not like we are lacking in Delta V. I'm pretty sure we're fine. <laughs> so we will just go ahead and get that good enough. Yeah, that's good enough. So next thing that we're going to do is we're going to head for the moon, of all things. We are going to do a gravity assist. No, I don't want to warp here. Stop it. Stop it. Okay. I want to add a maneuver. And that's not a great moon encounter. That's a much better moon encounter. So that will fling us out of the system here. Now, we're going to need to adjust where our periapsis over the moon is because that's actually an impact course. This looks decent. Okay, we'll call that good. We'll head on over to the maneuver node and we will physics warp as we do so. Excellent. And now that we're here, we will warp to the maneuver. And that burn will be in a about a minute and a half here. 
about a minute now. And we'll continue to warp a bit. Okay. Ten seconds now. And we'll just correct our heading a wee bit here. And we'll begin the burn right about now. If only we could lock to maneuver nodes, but after this flight, Jeb should be perfectly capable of doing that. Now, if we get to EVE and we discover that uh, it's not going to really be super viable to do Gilly with Delta V, there's, uh, it's a possibility with completely winging it like this. If we get there, the plan would just be to do the flyby, and then we would get the contract to land on Gilly fairly shortly thereafter, I would think. So that's kind of the plan at this moment. We're going to see how far we can go. And let's physics warp this turn, or rather this burn. We've got ourselves another, like, over a minute of burn time here, so, yeah. I'm completely content to physics warp it. Hello, moon. Okay, we are starting to see the node drift a bit, so we will correct for that a bit. There we go. About 80 meters per second left. That's probably close enough. Yep. So that will actually not quite eject us from the system. So we need to add a little bit more here. And that's an escape velocity. Perfect. Cool. So we'll get our gravity assist from the moon. We'll go ahead and warp here. And this will be actually our first escape from the Kerbin system, I think. We're going to get a lot of data from the, uh, from the orbit over the sun. Which is good. And here we are in the uh, in the moon's gravitational influence. We'll head on over. And thanks for the assist, moon. Later. Excellent. And that gives us our escape. So we're then going to warp up over this way. That's about 15 days away. Uh, where even is Kerbin at this point? There we go. Goodbye, Kerbin. Goodbye, Moon. And there's Minmus, just being very tiny. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. Everybody we know is right there. Fantastic. So we're going to escape here. And as soon as we do... Let's see. Our escape is going to be, like, out over here, I think, right? Yes. So we're going to warp over this way. That's about an additional day. Perfect. So we are now in space high over the sun. We can grab all of our data here, and we will happily do so. All of the science. Takes a little bit for the animations to play sometimes. We'll keep all that, and then we will collect all of that data in the experiment storage unit. We'll have Hadguard EVA. We're not going to try to grab all of the data repeatedly here. We're just going to head down and restore the Science Junior. And then we are also going to restore the Mystery Goo Containment Unit. We have more flights that's going to go through interstellar space. I'm not too concerned about trying to grab all of the... Okay, Hagard is teleporting again. I'm going to try not to grab all of the data here and store it in the various locations. We don't actually need it. So we'll hold off on these for now, and we will set Eve as our target. Okay, so we can see that we need a little bit of Delta V burned in the normal direction. So something like that to match the inclination of Eve. Perfect. So that's going to be 338.1 meters per second. I'm definitely glad we included this Rockamax X-16 tank. That's for sure. Okay. So we'll go ahead and we can actually just point at normal. And there goes Kerbin. Cool. So at the ascending node here, we will go ahead and do our burn. 
Honestly, now is completely fine. It really doesn't matter. This is such... Well, it, it matters as long as you're close to the node. But this is such a big orbit that being off by, like, one minute isn't going to be measurably problematic. So this is fine. We'll get this warp finished up in about 20 seconds here. 10 seconds. Okay. Let's go ahead and chase the node a little bit, just to make sure. Because we did burn off the uh, timing a little bit. Okay. That's probably good enough. Yes. Okay, so hypothetically, if we were to do a retrograde burn here, where would we be in relation to Eve? That is exactly the opposite side of the orbit. <laughs> okay. So, we may actually have to wait in orbit, which, of course, is a good thing we're not running a life support mod. Yeah, that's going to be... That's going to be quite a wait. <laughs> Definitely a good thing we're not running life support here. So, if we look at this, we can see that this isn't exactly an ideal encounter. So, we're going to want to have this be a somewhat minimal one. Well, not super minimal. I want it to be encapsulating the orbit of Gilly, though. So, I want it to be outside of the orbit of Gilly. And we can have it come back to about here. And that should be fine. Cool. So, obviously, this is going to be a pretty lengthy time warp. And I'm not going to make you watch the whole time warp because... Even at time warp, it's going to take a bit to warp a year. So we're just going to position here. Well, not quite a year, but very close. We're going to position here. And I'm going to put a pause into this particular recording. And we'll come back when this time warp is over. And a few minutes later, the time warp is complete. So we're just going to sit pure retrograde here. The node really isn't going to drift off of that. So we'll just get this last little bit of warp done here until such a time as it is time to burn. Excellent. We're about five seconds away as of now. So we'll get this burn done very, very shortly here. It's going to be about a minute and a half burn, so we are planning to physics warp it, and I should definitely have started the burn, but it's okay. We don't actually mind being one second late here. That's not going to make a big difference. This is not a particularly precise burn that we need for this insertion. We just need to get it approximately correct. So that's Absolutely fine. We are burning out this tank fairly quickly. Okay. Let's see what this is looking like as of right now. We're going to continue to burn retrograde here. This is honestly good enough. So we'll call that good. And then this periapsis here is going to be in another 136 days. So we'll do a retrograde burn here. That's a lot of, del of delta V there. That's for sure. I do want to make this be minimal. Okay. Something like this. So that's a thousand delta V. To be clear, I still think we have enough to pull this off. If not, we could always do a rescue mission, but I, I do think we have enough to pull this off. So most of this burn will be done with this tank. A little bit will be done with these tanks here. But we'll go ahead and warp towards that burn. Although, we're going to want to flip around to... I think this is going to be basically prograde for right now. It's very close to prograde. We'll allow that to sit, and then we will begin to warp, and then we'll flip retrograde. Now, this is going to be a bit of a lengthy warp again. I'm not going to pause this time, just because, I mean, you can see how quickly it's going down. It's, it's going to take a little bit, but it's not too, too bad. The other one was four times as long as this one, which, again, wasn't that bad, in all honesty, but... Better to not have to fill it, in my opinion. So we're going to have this warp done here in just a moment. And we are entering EVE now. Fantastic. So we've got in space high here, and we're going to grab as much data as we can. For the time being, we're just going to grab all of these. Because we're in space high. There's EVE there. Looking absolutely radiant. And we will grab our EVA report. And we will... Go ahead and collect all of our data here that we can. Yes, some of our experiments are now inoperable, but that's okay. We'll warp forward just a bit. 
Oh, we need to make sure that we're on retrograde. And we will start this burn shortly. Now, in fact. Cool. So obviously thrust to weights over Eve are spicy. <laughs> this would maybe have been easier if we had gone to Duna, but that's okay. So there's our world's world first flybys and such. That's absolutely great. And exploring Eve. Yep. Okay. So we're going to be burning out this tank very shortly. I kind of wish we had a little bit more in it, but this is what we've got. And I think it's enough. I mean, we've still got another, like, 3.4k. 3.4 kilometers per second in Delta V. I think that's enough. I hope. It should be. Okay, so this tank is about to burn out. Forty meters per second to go. There we go. Okay, so we are continuing to break here. And we'll physics warp this section of the burn. This is going to be a pretty lengthy section. Our thrust to weight here is low. Over Gilly will be fine. It's over Eve that we're a very low thrust to weight. So that's definitely something to consider. So we've got about 200 meters per second left to burn out here. There we go. A hundred more to go. We'll come off of the physics warp. And since we are probably going to be coming back here, again, I'm not going to be worried about getting all of the data from here. Okay, that's good enough. And we will set Gilly as our target. Next up is going to be the descending node. Ah, we're going retrograde. Okay. Uh, hypothetically, what would it look like if we just attempted to intercept? Yeah, that's what I thought. So we're going to need to flip our directionality around. How much delta V will that actually cost? That's about 700. I should have paid attention to this. I definitely should have paid attention to this. Okay. So we can do it like over here and do something like that. Just so that we have a little bit more time. Oh, uh, right. We're going, we're going this direction. So we can do our burn something kind of like this. That would be completely fine. We wouldn't need to push it out quite this far. We could save a little bit of Delta V by having it go to about here. That's fine. So that's like 700 more Delta V. That is definitely more than I was planning on spending here. There is another option. And that other option would be that we get rid of this. And we just try to intercept Gilly going retrograde. So we would need at the descending node here to burn normal and have this actually anti-normal. And have this go to 180 degrees. We need a little retrograde in there. Indeed. And then have that go to like there. And then from there, we would attempt to do an intercept. So something kind of like this. And then from there, we would do an orbital maneuver. So that's quite a bit of Delta V, of course. That's like 1200 Delta V there. We're going to be coming in retrograde here, and that's a bit problematic for us. But we could do something along those lines. So that would be a total of how much Delta V to make that happen. If we look at this burn, well, actually, we can just see in the tooltips. This one is 46 meters per second. This one is 107 meters per second. This one is 1245. Obviously, coming in retrograde was a mistake. I should have looked at that. 
But I mean, we can do all that and still have more on these outer tanks. We'd still have like 300 meters per second or 200 meters per second. And we could potentially land even on the outer tanks. Because Gilly is extremely small gravity, right? And then we just look to get escape velocity out of Gilly and go back that way. It's a possibility. I think this is a decent plan, all things considered. So this would be our next maneuver here. However, it is time to put a cut in here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And next episode is when we're going to attempt the actual landing on Gilly. You can leave your offerings to the engagement gods in the form of likes, comments, subscribes, and bell ringings, and special thanks to all the channel members for making this video possible. Those channel members include Spartan News and Rose Valentine and everyone else who is not in the shout out tiers, which is currently only one person, which makes that slightly awkward. But that is, of course, fine. And of course, thank you. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to support the channel, you can click the join button down below the video. And as always, I will see you all next time.